Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Chamber Chats, which, as always, is coming to you from the podcasting studio here at the Czech Media Group, one of our chamber champions. I like to always acknowledge from the beginning that I live and work in the unceded ancestral territory of the Lekwungen speaking people. We know them as the Songhees and the Esquimalt. The Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. So, we're having a number of conversations on our Chamber Chats with people who were involved in the changes at the municipal level in the elections we had late last year. One of those was one that uh, a lot of people saw coming and some didn't. But the fact is that Doug Kobayashi is now the mayor of Colwood and the mayor joins us now. Doug, how are you? uh, Great. Thank you very much, Bruce. Great. So you were on council, Doug, but you chose to run for mayor. Tell me about that decision. Why did you decide to do that? Well, the interesting thing about this whole thing was that uh, back in 2021, uh, the fall of 2021, of course, I, I went through a federal election, as you know, game mm-hmm. second. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, uh, my whole mindset about, you know, uh, serving the public was uh, I decided that I probably wasn't going to run on council again. And uh, which is an interesting uh, factoid. Um, decided not to. And uh, as early spring last year, uh, I was approached by citizens across the municipality in Colwood. And uh, they asked me that they they thought uh, I was a the, the different thinker on council. That's for sure. Okay. And uh, they, you know, uh, thought you know, asked me to consider running for mayor. And at that time, uh, you know, I was probably ninety percent no, uh, wasn't interested in the job. Yeah. But uh, I thought about it for a while because I wanted to make sure that you know it wasn't ego driven. And it wasn't because someone else wanted me to do it. I had to do it on my own terms and what I thought I could accomplish. So, you know, I made that decision about, uh, I would probably say late April, early May, that I decided that I would, uh, yeah, I would put my name in um, and just, uh, uh, you know, just different leadership styles. And and, um, that's when I decided that I wouldn't run for mayor. You know, it's a continuation. As you know, Bruce, I've always served my community. Um, no matter what, I've you know I've been a governor at Royal Roads University. I sat as the chair of the business school there. I was president of the West Shore Chamber of Commerce. I was president of the West Shore Rebels football team. I was on the board of governors down at the Conservatory of Music. On and on and on ad nauseum. So I've always served the community, and uh, I thought, geez, can, am I ready just to retire? And I thought about it, and my wife says, No, you're not. You know, <laughs> you, you have to have something to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you get this organized, you're going to start a campaign and then you have to have priorities and, and things that you stand for within the campaign. So tell me about your priorities. Okay. So I had five priorities and, and to, to actually decide what my priorities were, Bruce, um, I went out and I just quickly surveyed 400 homes throughout Colwood because they're not my priorities, right? That's, that's a mistake. A lot of pe- politicians, I believe make today, you know, it's your community that should be driving your priorities. So I just did a random sampling of, of, we just did 400 homes and I had a a volunteer that helped me and we tried to, lots of, lots of objectives out there. We tried to focus them down to five categories. And the first one was focusing on providing um, great core city services. And, and what that meant also was looking at the core, some of the core services that we were doing, what we belong to, what we didn't belong to, and, and uh, going through that whole core service review. The second uh, part of this was responsible growth. And I I am a a, a pro-development person, but in accordance with the OCP, we have an OCP. And uh, if we stay within the guidelines of the OCP, you know, I'm considering that responsible growth. And the third uh, big one was climate change leadership. And I don't know about your household, but this was driving me crazy, a lot of frustration to me because a lot of the uh, work that we were doing on climate change was just, it wasn't concrete enough for me. Like, I didn't know as a household, what, what should I be doing? What more besides recycling? So I thought, well, you know, I want to take some leadership there. And we had some initiatives that we're actually pursuing right now. The fourth thing is that what I'm well known for is fiscal health and financial accountability. So, uh, and, and, and what I mean by that is uh, we're actually driving in, we're going to be probably the first municipality to have uh, performance uh, scorecard metrics. So we're going to have actually KPIs for all our service areas and for our finances. 
And lastly, what I thought we were missing big time, we're so busy growing houses here. We forgot one big aspect, and that is uh, just making sure that we have the community amenities that we're growing with it. So I called it fostering health, uh, healthy community and vibrant neighborhoods. That's my fifth category. So they're my five priorities. So when you talk about the KPIs, the key performance indicators, and you let's apply that, for example, to climate, uh, to the climate mitigation that you're working on, what would you consider to be a crucial KPI or what would be a really front facing visible one? Well, the, the one that, like, for, from a city perspective right now is the, the GHGs uh, that we produce in our buildings right now. You know, buildings are a big part of it. Our transportation, our vehicles, we are doing something to mitigate that right now because we're electrifying our entire fleet. It's going to be over a period of time, but we are doing that. All our, our, all our uh, maintenance equipment, we're electrifying all that. That's going to be over, uh, over a, a time period. So they're the simple KPIs that we can actually implement, you know, and they're real, they're measurable. Uh, we could say to uh, our, our constituents right now, look, at, we are improving. So uh, th they're, the, they're the two easy ones right now. Uh, you grew up in Colwood, did you not? You were born and raised there? In, so look well, I, wasn't, I wasn't born there. I was actually uh, born on a, in Nova Scotia, of all places. Oh, wow. But my father was actually based here oh, okay. in Victoria. I was supposed to be born here. But I was uh, three months premature, so I was born in this little town called Annapolis Royal. They were just taking a ferry across to New Brunswick, oh. driving back to Victoria. So I was actually born in Nova Scotia, but, uh, you know, from 19, well, I was born in 56, so 57 onwards, I, w I lived in Colwood or within the West Shore. I've lived all in Colwood, Langford, a little bit of um, a chosen for a little while, but mainly in Colwood. So how is the Colwood of your youth different from the Colwood of today? It was much simpler, Bruce. <laughs> I, uh, I think it's going to be, it's tough being a kid today right now. I think, you know, um, you know, what, what used to entertain us was uh, watching Disney in black and white on Sundays on TV. We <laughs> didn't watch a lot of TV back then. No. I'm aging myself, but we saw it go out in the woods. We we're always out in the woods, playing in the woods. And we played outside a lot, you know, the ag football, all the standard things of, of, of that era. So, but today, I mean, the kids, you know, um, so much information, social media uh, is such a, is, is such a tough thing, you know, cyberbullying, what's happening right now. I see how it affects adults, never mind children, but it's happening. It's a real thing. A um, lot of, a lot more, maybe there was just as many mental health issues back then, but I don't think so. Cause there's a lot more pressures on the kids today, I believe. So there's a lot more mental health issues, I believe today um substance abuse i mean I, i'd be naive to think that there wasn't uh, marijuana being taken back in mm -hmm. those days but i mean we didn't have opioids i wouldn't i wouldn't even have known how to pronounce the word or spell the word back then you know it, it wasn't an issue and and also today you know what i see too is and i just cannot believe the number of single parent uh, families that we have I, they were just rare in, in our days it just Maybe they hit them someplace, but I don't remember that. You know, I just really do not remember. it. So I think there's a, a lot more uh, stress and pressure on the kids today. So uh, that's the difference. It was very simple times back then, I'll tell you that. Yeah, they, they certainly did seem more simple. I think, you know, things like mental health, I think, was there, but people just didn't talk about it the way they do now. Yeah, but absolutely. Some, something else that we sort of heard throughout the campaign from people, I did anyway, from people who live in Colwood, was, with all due respect, we don't want to be another Langford. I want to talk about that next. Our guest on Chamber Chat today is Doug Kobayashi. He's the mayor of Colwood, has been for a few months now. So that whole thing that I referred to, Doug, when people say, well, we don't want Colwood to become another Langford. That's not a slag on Langford by any means, but it just means that you're, you're kind of going to take a different direction in your development. Tell me about that. Uh, that's a great question, Bruce. Um, uh, and and, and uh... I guess this is another reason I ran, uh, because I was starting to see uh, the council at the time. I'm not saying everyone, but uh, there was a majority, and, and I understand the pressures too. You know, everyone wanted everyone wanted more housing out of us right now, and we had this thing called the housing needs report. But we're 38 percent exceeding 38 percent the targets uh, of, of what we have in the housing needs report. But what I was getting concerned with was that we were going that direction. And, you know, and uh, this is why I always look at housing being a, a regional issue. It's not just a Colwood issue or Langford issue. 
I think uh, Langford was doing great on the uh, on the apartments, and they're just doing a great job. So why can't we be that neighborhood of you know the the missing middle or the uh, uh, single detached homes? Yeah, that's that's my vision of what I saw. Um, but we are getting some apartments because you know uh, in our housing needs report we did say we were committed to doing some. So. Yeah, there, there, there is a, a major difference. Uh, we we uh, tend not to approve a box store applications here. So we stayed away from that. Uh, and maybe to our detriment, I don't know. Um, they're, they're a great source of revenue, but uh, we, uh, we've we decided that's, that's what we were going to do here. So, you know, I, I think what happened in Langford is great for Langford. It's good for us in the region right now. Um, but it's, it's, it's certainly not the makeup of Colwood. Yeah, you referred earlier to the OCP or the Official Community Plan, which is up for review this time around, uh, and this year actually. So all yes. of that housing conversation will be in that too. But let's talk about about attracting business or industry or developing that in Colwood. What do you see that as the path forward? I am um, so if you look at the data, and I'm a data driven person right now. Uh, the majority of our tax base is residential taxes. And uh, we have done a not a very good job of trying to attract uh, commercial businesses to come here. And uh, I mean, and they pay, you know, in accordance with our uh, mill rates right now, they pay three and a half, four times more per square foot than a residential home. Hmm. So to me, I see that as a, a big driver. And and what my vision was is I'd like to get the clean type of uh, technology businesses like medical, healthcare, uh, green tech. We had some opportunities four years ago, but we, we missed the boat on it. And you know, is it is it over? No, I'm I'm still going to uh, attack that right now. But we even talked about our communication strategy right now in our with our communications, and we do have a, a, a marketing um, budget. And I'd like to have it oriented, but smartly towards uh, getting that commercial uh, side of, uh, of uh, the tax base for for the city of Colwood. One of the um real game changers in the landscape of Colwood has been the creation of Royal Bay I want to, and Royal Beach. I want to come back and talk about that. But something else that people may be more aware of right now are, are the Allendale land, which is the old quarry right on Veterans right. Parkway. So there's, there's been land being leveled and things are moving in. What's going on on that footprint? Uh, right now, uh, they basically sold all the land that's to the south on the south. Or I always get my orientation wrong <laughs> here to the east. East side of 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 Allendale Pit. That's all. That's also that's where the McDonald's are, and there's two more restaurants, and mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a mental health unit of some sort that that's going in there. On the other side, it's a, a car dealership. Um, and uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, oh yeah, there's the uh, the, the shipyard uh, uh, storage facility. Right, the there. C span facility. C span, yeah, yeah is there. Uh, there's another. Uh, oh, I can't. I can't tell you. It's it's still in camera. Oh, another you can tell me, Doug. Come on, we yeah. go way back. You can tell me. <laughs> there's a there's another light industry moving in also okay. onto the onto the other side of the highway, and uh, so you know uh, I I know that there's a lot of activity uh, because there's there's moves afoot right now in selling more land and making it available for commercial. It's uh, it's zoned right now um, multi. It's a multi use zoning right now. Hmm. So uh, I, I foresee a lot more of that light industrial, you know, the commercial um, uh, businesses that are going to go into there. So you've got, to, we'll go back to Royal Bay now. Royal Bay is the upper part and Royal Beach is the lower part where, where Machosen Road runs along there. So the upper part has been developed quite a bit. The lower one is coming along. That, that whole plan changed to densify a little bit more. And there's going to be a commercial uh, element to that uh, on uh, right on the waterfront where there's going to be, I believe, a marina and a bit of a shopping and entertainment area. And you've also got the Royal BC Museum archive structure at Royal Bay. So right. when will that southern half of that start to get going? Uh, within the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just, we're just, uh, we've just trying to finish off right now the whole parks plan here. And uh, the way that, the, how it's going to develop, uh, Bruce, is Everything along the chosen road will be developed first there, and then, then they're going to start moving down the hill. So, you know, it's like, you know, the left, right, left, right, a little bit of, you know, residential, commercial, residential, commercial. And uh, so um, that that's how that's going to go right now. But it is a long-term development, though, you know, right up to 2038. Yeah. 
There's also, we have to talk about transportation because most of the people who live in Colwood don't work in Colwood, so that means they have to travel around a lot. So I want to talk about that on a regional scale and also about the West Shore Ferry. I want to talk about that. Our guest today on Chamber Chats is the mayor of Colwood, Doug Kobayashi, who has been around since the election. Was so you're sworn in in, Feb- in uh, December, rather, right? November. In November, right. Yeah. So we talked about Royal Beach, the lower half of what's going on there be- below Machosen Road. Uh, there has been a, a talk of a West Shore Ferry, which our chamber is actually in favor of. And we feel that that would be a good thing to have a commuter ferry going from Royal, ba- Royal Beach into downtown. Is that something that the municipality is behind? Uh, with this current council, the discussion hasn't happened. Hmm. And I can tell you with the previous council, we, we didn't say we were supportive of it. We said we were supportive of the study, which was the feasibility study for right. it. And that's what we were behind. So just to make sure that you're clear on that. But the, on this particular council, the subject has not been brought up yet. It does have to be re-brought up because, you know, either we're going to support it or not support it. Yeah, there was a pre-feasibility study, but now the Treasury Board has to approve a feasibility study. So that's, Correct. that's what's pending. What about and the... They, they will not uh, fund it right now, so... No, they, apparently not. They, uh, so, yeah. so in the big picture, though, transportation, Doug, is people, as we said a couple of minutes ago, people that live in Colwood don't usually work in Colwood. So they're driving Correct. and they're traveling. And so what needs to happen to make all of that a little smoother, a little easier? Is, that, is there a reason for rail to come back, for example? I would love to see the rail happen. Uh, I grew up when there was rail there mm-hmm. back in the 60s. Yeah. There was rail. There was a rail service. And uh, I, a lot of people say, well, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't stop in Colwood per se, but it takes off. It, it'll take off, you know, well over greater than 2,000 cars off the road. So I'm a big fan of it. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, the land belongs to the island, uh, island corridor right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we don't do something with it, we're going to lose it. So I, I am very supportive of uh doing something with it right now, getting, you know, the rail, the, you know, a light uh, uh, rail transport system going on it or something. So I, I'm, I'm probably a bigger fan of that because I understand there's, there's a fixed dollar amount that you have for this. And, and right now we, we're looking at all modes, but the reality is there's only going to be one thing that's going to be affordable in the near or medium term. So I'm more supportive of rail over the ferry at this point in time. I should point out we're actually recording this on January 31st, so we may well have had an announcement on some of that stuff by the time this gets posted. So we'll see what that looks like. So you, you're the new mayor in Colwood. There's a new mayor in Langford. There's a new mayor in View Royal. There's a new mayor in Machosen. And it seems to me that there might be a little bit more collaboration or conversation happening between the municipalities. Is that a, is that a fact? You are, you've read it correctly, uh, Bruce. Um, I can tell you right now, we've already met twice as a collective group right now. It just started off with uh, it, with just the, uh, the the mayor of uh, Langford, myself, the mayor of View Royal, and the mayor of Machosen. But we've expanded it right now to the Highlands, to include the Highlands, and even the electoral district. Mm. Uh, L L has come into this right now, and uh, we do talk about things that affect the West Shore and Hull. So it's uh, we, we're meeting about we're we're really disciplined about this. We're meeting every six weeks or so. So it's pretty good. Uh, so there's a, I have a lot of optimism right now. Uh, you know, we may be small uh, individually around the table at the CRD, but collectively when we're all together there, that's, that's a lot of votes. So I, I'm, I'm really encouraged by it. So. Okay, yeah. So that conversation, and we go back to what we talked about before with people, uh, you know, a lot of people who live in Colwood don't work in Colwood. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that are now working from home pretty frequently. And that has sort of changed people's consumer habits, and they were shopping closer to home in the West Shore in all the jurisdictions where they live. What does that then mean for the future of infrastructure? We can include everything from from houses to sewers to roads to transportation to whatever it might be. But tell me about that conversation. Let's look at sewer. Sewer's a prime one right now. By the time we build out Royal Bay and Royal Beach, there is no more sewer capacity. We can't even uh, put everyone else on sewer in, in the breast of Colwood. And you've got to remember that 70% of the people in Colwood are on septic tank, mm-hmm. 70%. And we're hoping right now that because what we're doing with our housing needs report, we're absolutely exceeding their targets. Um, we are hoping to get that infrastructure money they've been talking about right now. They said, we promise the ones that are behaving 
and doing what they said they were going to do, there's going to be infrastructure dollars. I'm hoping that will help uh, with uh, a lot of our infrastructure issues we have, like water, power, and sewage. And there's a lot of people that want to get onto sewer right now, but the capacity isn't there. Yeah, everybody kind of considers uh, that to be a more a rural thing, but no, they're on septic right in the city of Colwood. As you said, 70% of the people are. So, and so as far as the rest of the amenities, I mean, this is what I was talking about right now. We, you know, we are not Langford, we're Colwood, but, you know, we're getting our own grocery stores now. You know, we've got a new Save on Foods. We're going to have the quality foods in Royal Bay. We're looking at the other main staple type of stores that you, you can have so that we can stay within the community, hopefully save, save GHGs mm-hmm. um, and, and, and just taking a little good look at that right now. And then we are going to develop an overall plan that just looks at our demographics. So not only where we are today, but in the future, to look at what other things do we need? How many more soccer fields do we need? How many lacrosse boxes do we need? Do we need more ice rinks? Do we need swimming pools? One of your predecessors is mayor. Uh... Uh, Dave Saunders is actually organizing something through their family foundation about trying to establish better medical care on the West Shore to get clinics in place and practitioners. Where's that at? Uh, it's doing really well. I was just at, at they had a, uh, a meeting on Thursday, last Thursday night, and it was probably close to 80 to 100 people at this meeting. And I can tell you what we've done as a city right now. Um, I, I've always been involved with this from day one, to tell you the truth, uh, Bruce. Um, this has always been a thing that Dave, uh, Dave started when he was mayor of the city at that time. He kept it going. And if it wasn't for, well, if it wasn't for his leadership, it would have been dead by now. But uh, they've actually got uh, money from the province to help you know, with, the, with consultants work right now. But within the city right now, we're actually set, setting up a health care committee. Now, it's a provincial responsibility for the most part, but there are things that we can do as a municipality. It's an all-hands-on approach right now, and uh, we're working with doctors and developers right now looking at medical facilities like as, as part of the you know any development that we have, making sure that the facilities are there. You know, we'll, we'll look at maybe uh, property tax exemptions for them. You know, we'll... we'll We'll do whatever we can that's within, you know, the uh, uh, Municipal Act and the Community Charter. So, you know, it's all hands-on approach. And wouldn't it be nice to say, hey, if you move to Colwood, we guarantee you a family doctor. That's the vision. Hmm. Doug Kobayashi is the mayor of Colwood. He's a busy guy. Doug, we very much appreciate your time today, and thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot, Bruce. See you soon. You bet. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. Mm-hmm.